Hello again, Tommy here, back in my shop. Uh, going to talk about a, a little different technique. We did a video on stacking to stack and cut and create multiple pieces. Well, this is kind of the opposite. We're going to cut and then stack. And that's, that's called layering. You can create different kinds of uh, projects with layering. There's several versions. Some of it's flat layering. Some of it uh, kind of goes up a little higher, which is what this is going to be. You can see this is a this is going to be a basket. It's called basket weave. That I got two pages of uh, a pattern like that. I've already cut out one of the pages, and then there's a, a page with a top and a bottom. And I'll show you how I handle a pattern when it's like this. What I like to do, uh, what I've done, is uh, I've got my material. This calls for half inch. And I've got my material cut so that it'll fit this board that I have. That's half inch walnut. I try to conserve material as much as possible. You have a lot, what you would call waste. It's still usable, but it's waste for this project. And I try to cut as efficiently as I can. So what I do is I take a ruler and I draw a line on the outside of that, that uh, the actual pattern. And then I use this this cutter. I'll line that line up in my little groove and just cut that sucker like that right there and I do that all the way around to get the pattern like I had it over here. Now what I'm going to do with this one, and I'm going to cheat a little bit on this, uh, it's not a lot of fun cutting long straight lines on a scroll saw and I can cut them much straighter and truer on a table saw. So I've uh, mounted these on this uh, board, this is poplar, this quarter inch poplar. And uh, I'm just going to cut, especially this one, I'm going to cut right through there, with the, I'm going to split them with a the table saw, and then I'm going to sneak up on that line with a few passes on my crosscut sled. And I always leave a little bit in a project like this, because then when you assemble the final uh, project, you can kind of sand it or adjust it to where you get uh, a good match. If you cut it too short, you're not going to match very well. I like to have a little extra to work with. So, now let me take this over the table saw, and uh, I'll show you how I cut that. I got it on my crosscut sled. I just barely got the blade raised enough to cut this. And I'm going to try to cut more or less right down the center of that blue stripe between the two patterns. And then I'll sneak up on each one a little bit. If, if I need to cut a little more, I may not once I get this cut that's about an eighth inch cut on the blade. So it may be close enough without cutting anymore, but we'll see. sneak up on that a little bit, give it a little bit more. call that good and I'll turn it and cut these pieces also and get it down the side of that. But then I'll mount them and we'll go to the scroll saw and start cutting it. Okay so I've got my patterns mounted. I got my pieces cut. I mounted these four on this uh, one piece and I've got my top and my bottom. I cut these out on the, on the table saw. Now it left me a little room around these because uh, these are parts that are going to match up after you cut them out and I like to leave myself a little room and sneak up on that line as, as I match pieces together uh, to uh, you can try to look ahead for things to make sure that they match up properly you don't have gaps or, or pieces sticking out too far or if I cut them too short you, not much you can do about it but if you cut them a little long you can uh, sand them or cut them down a little bit 
Now, this video, this project is basically a cut and then stack. A lot of the other things I've done, such as stack cutting and inlay, is you, you uh, stack and then cut. This one you're going to cut and then stack. And so you've got to be thinking ahead as you cut these because these have got to match up with each other. Uh, basically, these little, like on these pieces, these have got to match up with your corner on your bottoms. And the, the rest of that, probably not quite as uh, critical, uh, but you want these to hit your lines in the right place. And I always cut just a little bit over. I fudge on the outside of the line so that I can uh, then adjust them as I put them together. We'll cover that when I get to that point. Uh, I've already drilled my holes in all these. Now, these two patterns are the same and these two are the same. So you could have stacked these two and made one cut for each one. But I went ahead and, and did it this way. And so uh, now I'm ready to take them to the saw and cut them. The thing is, the point I'm trying to make here is you need to look ahead when you're cutting before you sit down and cut it to make sure how you're going to cut it so that it all matches up when you get through. Uh, let's just kind of look at it and, and think ahead a little bit on it. So let me get set up over at the scroll saw and then we'll try to cut a little bit of this. So here we are at the scroll saw. I have put a new blade in. I'm using a number three. A number five will work great for this. I'm about out of fives. So I gotta get me some more in, so I'm gonna use a three. It's a reverse tooth blade. Uh, I'll cut the internal cuts. I like to do all the internal cuts first, and then I'll come back and do the outside cuts. I'll just cut a little bit here real quick, just to kind of get the get the ball rolling. I won't film the whole thing because there's be a lot of cutting, but we'll start with this right here. Okay, if you, know, if you noticed, I had to s slow it down just a little bit. This wood is cutting so quick and easy, and I'm having trouble controlling it as well as I'd like. So I slowed the blade down a little bit, but uh, that's going to be okay. I don't like to get off the line that much. But uh, I slowed it down a little bit. You can see I'm using my back end cuts to get those crisp edges right there and get the, uh, down in the little corners. Uh, sometimes you have to come back maybe clean those out a little bit when you get through. And it probably doesn't matter, but I'm a detail-oriented guy, and I like to get as much detail right as I can. But I'll go ahead and cut the rest of this, and then we'll, I'll demonstrate uh, putting it together, which is probably the critical part. Once you get, uh, make sure you cut it right here, and it makes it easier to put together, but then matching everything up will be the next big step. So I'll finish cutting this up, and, uh, and we'll get to that. Before I pull out of this last inside cut, I wanted to demonstrate what I was talking about going in and touching up. 
sometimes when you back in, like I try like to do to get these real crisp corners here, you'll get a little bit of sawdust back in behind your blade. You don't get make as sharp a turn out of there as you like. So what I do when that happens is I'll I'll go in and just touch it up just like this. Now that one was too bad, but occasionally you get one that's a little worse. It really needs a good touch up. It probably doesn't really matter. But I like everything crisp. I like the details correct. Uh, it's, it's areas like that that really define your work. Uh, these all did pretty well. Uh, occasionally you have to clean one up a little bit. I think all that is pretty good. I'm going to do the outside cuts and then we'll get over to the bench and uh, try to get this together. Well, I got through cutting everything else. <clears throat> and we'll get back to that in a minute, but I left the pattern on the top and the bottom. I cut this, the uh, <clears throat> internal part of the top out. But I left the pattern on and I want to use that. What I do in a case like this is I go dry fit it and see how everything fits and what I need to do. So I left the pattern. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just use the sander, my belt sander here, a disc sander, I'm sorry, to round these corners and uh, get this edge off because i got plenty of room. I don't have to worry about that being too short. So I'll do that real quick. I've got it all cut out, partially sanded and cleaned up. <clears throat> what I've done now is I've kind of started dry fitting it just to see how it's going to fit together. To look ahead as I, as I assemble it, what I've got to do to make it fit. Looks like it fits really well. Uh, you have to mess up pretty bad cutting to make it not fit, but I like to uh, dry fit, look at it, see what I got to do. So, what we're going to do is going to glue each layer together one at a time uh, and there are all the pieces and you got this one so what I do at this point I kind of look at these I've got my little file here and I see little, little places like that that's got some uh, fuzz or whatever debris on it I kind of clean it up it helps it fit together better plus uh, it just makes it look better. So you just kind of look it over, clean it up, make sure there's nothing left that will be in the way or detract from the looks. Even with a reverse tooth blade, you'll get a little bit of that. Mainly, see what I'm going to do is on the, on these little round pegs that are here. That's, that's what I'm going to match up with to line everything up and make it look because those pegs are supposed to look like a, a framework for a weave to go around. And so I want those to look like, as they go through, the, it looks like a solid piece going through the layers. So I have to match those up as I come up with it. And I'm going to line it up, as you can see, the corners together, they kind of match up real nicely. With. So let me get a little glue and we'll try to put that first layer on. Got me a little drop of glue here. Got me a little stick because I don't want to put a lot of glue anywhere. This doesn't require a lot of glue. So on the bottom here, of course, you can glue all these places because the whole thing's going to match up. Uh, but through the other layers up, I'm going to match these pegs, I call them. Uh, from one layer to the next, because that's the only, that's a common place for all of them. They do cross over in some other places, but it's kind of difficult to see 
when you have it, it doesn't take a lot of glue to hold this on. And I don't want so much that it'll slide if I put a weight on it to hold it down. So I'm gonna line that up just like that. Line up those corners. Draw up a little excess off of there. I'm going to let that sit and get tacky, and I'll put a little weight on it and let it set for a while, and we'll do the next one. Blue set up enough for us to move forward. So at this point, what I did, I looked at these corners and made sure they were close to being okay. I sanded this one a little bit, and this one just a little bit to make them a little more uh, even, and uh, no stick over, or overhang, or underhang, whatever. I got that looking pretty good. So now I'm going to glue the next one on. So you can see you got a peg inside the corner there, and I'm going to want a peg outside the corner on the next one to alternate. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to check this one for being cleaned up just like the other one. It looks pretty good. Just kind of look in detail because sometimes I can hold it up a little bit where it doesn't glue properly. And it just looks a little better if you keep it cleaned up. That actually looks pretty good. Especially on these little little round tabs. Uh, that's where you want it to glue. Make sure they're making good contact. So now we're going to glue that one on. And again, I'm just going to put a little glue on each one of these tabs. Not a lot. And I consider what's, you know, for sure you're going to match up in those places. And the next step is going to be to make sure you have it lined up really nicely. So now, got to make sure we get it aligned. Set it down as carefully as we can. Look at all of them all the way around. Make sure they're lined up with the one below them. And that looks pretty good. So then I'm going to let that sit before we go to the next one. Okay, we're down to the final gluing. I went ahead and put the other few layers on. Uh, doing the same thing, cleaning and lining everything up as I went. I put a little glue on the top of this. I'm going to top it upside down on that so I make sure I get it aligned. It's easier to see doing it from this direction. So we're going to tip it over there and line it up. Look at each corner. Make sure they're all pretty much the same, and they are. And so there you go. So my camera cut out on me there at that last bit, but anyway, uh, we have it finished. Everything is lined up nice. Uh, I didn't put any finish on it. Uh, you can finish these before you put them together. Or I'm, I'm just going to leave it like this because this was just an example for this video. I may give that to someone. But uh, I really like the effects you get with that layering. That's not the only kind of layering you can do. This is a layered piece. It's got like uh, seven, six pieces plus the back and the top. Uh, and you got a different uh, thing on each uh, layer there and it gives you a 3D uh, effect. And then this is layered too. You've got three layers at the nose and two layers everywhere else. That's just other examples of the type of layering you can do. Uh, in these you can see I, I finished these. I got a polyurethane on that, I think, a spray. And the only thing about that, it does bring the grain of the wood out a little better when you put some kind of finish on it. You can use some paste wax or uh, something, but uh, that looks pretty good like it is. Uh, sometimes you put some kind of a finish, it'll give you a little more of an effect on the grain. That's what I like about it. But anyway, that's this uh, video on layering. That's one of the techniques you can do, one of the effects you can get. It's called basket weave and I really like the way it turns out. 
Uh, people ask me how did I bend that wood, but uh, I've also made bows and things in the same effect. Uh, compound cutting, make it look like the wood was layered or bent. But anyway, that's uh, a nice little effect you can get with that kind of layering. So I hope this was helpful to you. Hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for watching. Uh, please hit the subscribe button if you're liking this. Uh, we're going to get into something a little different from this point. I'm going to get a little more freestyle and less, less pattern use for a little while. Uh, that's just a block of wood I've put together out of some cedar. And I'm going to make a box out of that. A real simple little technique. going to be kind of crude. But we're going to show you how to do it with no pattern. Just an idea and a, and a thought process. And moving step one, step two, step three. But that's what I'm going to do next. And hope hope you look forward to that. And hope you watch it when I do it. So thank you for watching. And I uh, hope to see you in the next one.